Hey, race fans, Doug Bowles here on the cusp of the 104th running of the Indianapolis 500. And as you all know, it's going to be a tough one this year without you all as fans here with us. But one of the best traditions in the Speedway, and one of my favorite things really is the program. And the history of our program dates all the way back to the first Indianapolis 500. And as a collector of programs, uh, they are often very, very cool and the artwork and the stories behind them. And this year is no different. And in this year, we're pretty excited because we're capturing the entire history of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway from the founders of Carl Fisher and his partners all the way through today and Roger Pinsky and even a little bit of a touch on the postponement and the challenges that we've gone through in 2020. But we couldn't do it without the artists that put these things together. And today we've got Alex Wakefield with us and Alex has uh, been commissioned really to do this and it's been a project for him as things have changed. But Alex, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. You know, you're a racing fan. You grew up in Iowa as a short tracker, and I'm the same. There's nothing quite like short track, but uh, also nothing quite like the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And somehow you've been able to marry your love for art and your love for motorsport, and you've done some pretty uh, amazing things throughout your career. Uh, but we are really excited to have you as the artist for the program cover. Talk a little bit about how you came up with the 40 individuals that are on the, on the cover this year, uh, some of your favorite stories, maybe the behind-the-scenes stuff. Some of those faces are obvious. Uh, but talk a little bit about how you uh, how you really envisioned this and how it came to be. Uh, but thanks for having me, by the way. Um, what I was going to say is the biggest thing is that there's so much history behind the track, and I tried to represent the three- and four-time winners and then the other people that really made huge landmark moments at the track. Uh, Janet Guthrie, Lily T. Ribs. Um, let me see here. Who else do I got? Um, I got the program, or excuse me, the cover right next to me. So I'm like, wait a minute, I had to review. But um, just trying to hit the eras and the people that were really significant in those eras. Um, Wilbur Shaw is a huge one, um, just for what he did as a driver and then getting Tony Holman to purchase the track. I mean, we wouldn't be sitting here if Wilbur Shaw didn't, you know, yeah. get the gumption to do it. It was a yeah. military dump, if I remember correctly. So it's yeah, it was, it was a big change. It was big trouble in World War II. You even picked up uh, personalities like Tom Carnegie. Yeah, um, he was huge. Uh, just as uh, the video from I think about ten years ago said, after he passed, it was just like he was helping drive the crowds, and there was no jumbotrons. It was his jumbo voice that was making it happen, and you know, just it, and it's still going up. You know, oh wow, you know. So it was just. Uh, he had to be represented, I felt for sure. Um, what else? You, you've got Ro yeah. you've got all the all the main folks in there that have mm -hmm. been the stewards, and you've got Roger Pinsky in there as well, and kind of mm -hmm. got him in a position where you know it really looks a lot like his ownership piece with his 18 wins. Uh, did you think about maybe putting him in a different spot, or were you just really comfortable with where he was there, since that's what he's done up to this point, really? It, it was more trying to capture uh what he's done to this point you know because this is this is the start of a new thing for him you know um he's done so much you know just as an owner and then a car constructor with the cars over in pool england and then just keep rolling from there and winning so many 500s uh it, a lot of it was a there's a linearity to it too um i was trying to make things dynamic so the the viewer could kind of follow along with the era but it wasn't just a straight timeline so I was trying to give it a little bit more uh, variety in, uh, visually but um, where he's at it, it's kind of a it's a linear thing you know he's people know the history of the track know that those achievements are behind him and this is kind of where he's at going forward so that, that was kind of an important place to put him right there. So you also included some newspaper um, headlines in there mm -hmm. did you did those come up? Had you thought about those on the front end, or how did that get in the mix? Because they actually add some context to it that I think makes it a pretty special program cover. It started off with the Parnelli uh, breaks 150, and then we were think things were pretty normal up to. I'm trying to think when things really shifted. It was like late February, early March. Things started shifting, and we possibly could have a delay, and then. Um, that's where I chatted with a couple of people over at creative and we we're like, okay, if this is there, this is happening. Maybe we can kind of leverage it and make it, uh, since the newspaper was such a big thing, uh, as I recall seeing some of the images of like, 
you know, AJ wins the 500, here's a newspaper. Vuk wins the 500, here's a newspaper right away. So it was always kind of a thing for, for a long time. So it kind of worked out that way. And, and all the way through today, still people still pick up a paper, not as much. Obviously, they're on their phones and everything. But um, trying to keep that continued thread all the way through with the news of the speed and then World War II and then what's going on right now, too. So you selected a few cars that you've included, which I think are important to them. And last year's winner, which is fantastic to continue to carry on that tradition of the importance of celebrating the winner, who will, with the exception of uh, uh, pre-World War I and pre-World War II, well, as Simon Pagano is going to say, he's the, been the defending champion uh, for as long as anyone, mm -hmm. which also picked up on Alan Sir Sr. and his, his, the 50th anniversary of his first win and, and kind of the, the importance of that. But how did you choose uh, the other cars that you've got in the program? Um, a lot of it had to do with aesthetics. Um, and a lot of it, there, there's... It was aesthetics and, and what they achieved. So the Louis Meyer car, that was, to me, the Miller was Penske before yep. Penske. Just chromed out, polished, gorgeous. Um, it's one of my favorite cars at the museum. Um, and then um, also, uh, I believe it's Sam Hanks it is. Um, in the Blonde. And that, that's my little nod to Donald. I, I believe that was his favorite car of, of all the winners, too. So um, hello, Donald. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a lot of it as, was aesthetics and then what they achieved. And then Ari's car, I always liked that era of Lola. I mean, yep. there was a lot of them, but it just, it looked fast and it was, it's still the fastest, uh, ever 500. So that need to be represented too, I felt. Well, that's the thing I was trying to get at by asking you these questions. It's amazing. You didn't just put a bunch of stuff on a piece of paper. There's thought sort of behind everything in there. I think maybe the thing that I appreciate the most uh, because it it really shows the passion of the speedway it, it is the way you capture dan weldon and it's not in yep. the lane it's not crossing the start finish line it's doing what dan does best which was show his passion for this place and lay it on the bricks and just swallowing in the fact that i've just won the indianapolis 500 for the second time in my in my opinion it's one of the more magical moments we've had here and to capture that uh, i think was really really pretty important as well yeah it was <laughs> We had talked about just doing a two panel originally. And then we, again, with creative, we're like, okay, let's see if we can do three. <laughs> went, okay, what am I going to do with that fold? Because that's going to be right on the fold. And then it's like, wait a minute. I remembered seeing something about that. So that worked out really nicely for the composition. Yeah, it's great. The other, the other thing, that, and I don't know if you meant for this to happen, but you know, the pylons been really important to our history. And there have been three of them. We're on our third generation. And you pick it up that second generation pylon. I think it's a pretty uh, pretty important piece too, because that's the pylon that so many of us, when we fell in love with the Speedway, kind of been right. along with us for most of our career. And it's that that throwback one with the logo on the top. And, and that was a, a pretty cool moment as well. Yeah, I, I, I saw a lot of different little YouTube clips and features and everything. And I saw a featurette from one of the local uh, TV stations about how the first pylon used to have to climb up in there. And I'm like, I'm not that claustrophobic, but that looks super tight, just changing light bulbs and stuff and seeing what's going on. It's pretty extraordinary how they did that. So uh, just, it, you have a favorite racing moment yourself? Did it, ca it make it or is there a moment that, were there any moments that you thought about including that just didn't have the space for that, that sort of missed, missed this uh, trifle? Um, let's see. My, my first 500 I actually ever attended was 2008, but... I always watched it. Uh, the first one I remember was the 84 race. Jack Villeneuve winning in 95 was probably my favorite just because of I met – I didn't meet him, excuse me. I waited behind his pit to get one of my drawings signed in 95, and apparently I was made enough of a nuisance to a crew member, and he was cool enough to take it over to him. He has helmet on, and it was – Pole day 95, so it was cloudy and nobody's really running. So it was just, everybody's kind of hanging out and just kind of waiting. So I got that signature, and then like two weeks later, he won it. I, I freaked out at home. It was amazing. So for me personally, that was that's the big one. Um, Willie T's huge because I followed him through Trans Am and sports cars, and then seeing how much he had to go through just mechanically beyond the other stuff. And then just really made it happen on uh, on bump day. It's like there was no question he was going to make it as long as the engine held together, and that that was huge too. That was so cool. Yeah, and then, um, and I you know capturing Willie and Janet both on the cover I think is really important because those are two mm -hmm. top five moments for sure in the history of the speedway. 
and, and you've had a unique relationship with Willie beyond just being a fan. I'm the same. I loved him as a Trans Am driver. He was either going to, he was going to win, win races or, or put somebody out in the way because he was just so aggressive and so competitive. And he, he you know, is one of those bigger than life personalities in our sport, but you've had an opportunity to work alongside him. You're official artist for him, I believe. And with yep. the, up, with the uppity movie documentary that's been out, it's been amazing to see that story, not just the qualifying story here at the Speedway, but the story of Willie's life and the challenges that he went through and the unbelievable attitude, frankly, that he had to just make sure that he was going to win and get to the top. But um, how, how's it been working with Willie? Oh, fantastic. He's hilarious. Um, but he's always, he's always a straight shooter uh, and he's done a lot for me in helping out with the uh, promotion of the artwork and everything. And um, just, yeah, I mean, he, he is what you see and uh, I've enjoyed working with him a lot. You know, it's, it's, it's nice when you get to meet somebody and it's like, it's not just, you develop a relationship and the initial impression continues on it's like now this is who he is you know there's no subterfuge there's no like oh well, well i've talked to him a couple of times and it's mm, not so much he's actually a genuine person and i appreciate that about him no that's for sure he, he calls it like it is he, you know where you stand with him he's a great guy and the story's the story is pretty unbelievable well i appreciate you taking the time to spit, let our fans know a little bit about what's behind the cover. As I said, the uh, program is one of the most important pieces, especially for our fans that have come for year over year over year. They collect mm -hmm. them, uh, they read them on race morning, and the artwork on the cover uh, really tells a story. And I don't know that we've ever had a cover like this with so many stories inside it. So I think it'll be a lot of fun uh, for our fans to understand a little bit. You're thinking about how we got there, but, but let's uh, talk a little bit about you. So, So you are an artist, you do a lot of motorsports art. Can you talk a little bit about how, as our fans start to understand more about you, where they can learn more about your art, see some of the things that you've got available for fans to uh, pick up? Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, my website's www.motorart27.com. Um, I sell originals, I sell prints, I do commissions, you know, pretty typical that way, but um, I just have all different genres of, of racing. Um, I've got everything from indie cars, sports cars, Formula One, uh, and again, I'm always developing and, and getting new projects in that way. So it's, and I even do model cars. I started discovering that again since COVID. I was like, I'm going to do a kit. So yeah, I built a Mercedes, uh, Sauber Mercedes at one Le Mans 89 recently. So it was a lot of fun to do that. But as far as that was a personal thing, but as far as doing it for, uh, fans and, uh, and that sort of thing, I, I make anything really, um, even sprint cars, that type of thing. So. That's great. Well, we, we appreciate all the effort you put into the program. Sorry that uh, our fans won't be able to be here to see it. I'm excited about the reception it's already gotten. And as we uh, unveil it even further, I think it's going to be one of the more popular programs we've ever had. I have it about six inches from me. Do you want me to pull it on screen? Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look okay. at it. It'd be much better to see it, uh, see it alongside you. And this is all um, airbrush, uh, colored pencil, and ink. So... Look at that. That's awesome. Very, very good. And he's got to pan it over being the trifold. That's awesome. Yeah, just some unbelievable images there. <laughs> I mean, it's starting in the upper left-hand corner with the founders and working our way down through uh, uh, Roger and Tony George in the, in the lower right-hand side. It's a pretty cool way to capture our history in a, in a program cover. So thank you, Alex, for all, that, all the efforts. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll be in touch, and I'm sure our fans will be reaching out and saying thank you to you. I appreciate the opportunity, Doug, to chat with you and then to do the cover. It's, uh, you know, not many people have gotten been, been able to do it, uh, to be alongside people like Peter Max and David Ewell and uh, Tim Cade and Greg Beal also. So yeah. I, I got to work along with them. No, I um, this is very you, special. Yeah, and Gre Greg was a great guy and you, you've had your time here as well. So I thank you mm -hmm. so much for uh, having the Speedway in your DNA and we'll uh, look forward to maybe doing some stuff with you in the future. Sounds great, Doug. Thanks so much. Thanks, Alex. All right.